Uh, I wasn't ready. <laughs> I thought I was ready, then I wasn't ready. I've got no words. You might find out. <laughs> and I don't know about that. Wow. With Jim Jeffries. <laughs> Wow. Ah, wow. the prep work we do on this show. <laughs> Jack, Jack looked over at me and went, are you ready? And then I, he has on his TV, John Mayer, and I thought I'll go, John Mayer, and then I couldn't think of another John, and then I all, almost said John Denver, and I think I've mentioned John Denver before. And wow. so, I, yeah, twice. <laughs> so I was like, ah, I'll just bail out on this one. I, I like how you're like, the prep work we do on this show. Just you. you it was your goal the to prep, not have to do prep any prep work. The work that I do on the show. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I acknowledge that. Uh, I want to thank all the people at Calgary and Edmonton for coming out to the shows. All four shows were fantastic. The crowds were great. It feels like uh, we're all back in business now after COVID. I will say this about the tour that um, I don't know if it's because I'm sober or, or what it is, but <laughs> all the shows have gone good. There's been, you know, in varying degrees of goodness, you know, but there hasn't been a dud amongst them on this tour. All the all the audiences have been great. Normally, there's one show where you go fuck. Yeah. Uh, well, coming up this weekend. Coming up this weekend, we're uh, in uh, <laughs> Cleveland, Cleveland and Detroit, Detroit. and oh, so, so it has an opportunity. Anything to go Anything can happen. <laughs> anything happen. There's extra show added in Detroit. We added an extra show, so uh, get onto those tickets. Um, uh, the last the last time we were in Detroit, we did two shows in one night. Yeah, I stopped doing that. Yeah, and then I I started the second show. And I don't think whoever was in charge of us didn't check to see that the crowd was in their seats. I think they just started it. And it was a battle royale for me. Because <laughs> we were, uh, Justin Martindale was there. Because he, he went first the first show. I go, I'll go first this one. And he was just standing on the side of the wings. And he was like, I'm so happy you went first. Because I was like, all right. There were, they did, there were some people in the front row that did the, um, uh, the, the naked gun thing with the Queens box, you know? Yeah, yeah. They were just sitting in the front row, five people, and then people came up with their tickets, and they're like, oh, I guess we're in the wrong the front row. I was like, I guess we're not in the front row. Oh, I guess, oh. We're, I guess we're in the second story, it turns out. <laughs> that F looked like an A. Yeah, yeah. No, they weren't even close. They were like, went way to the back, and they were drunk as shit, and I was like, oh, it's going to be one of these shows. I, I, got, the, I, got, the, I got tickets at Dodgers, at Dodgers Stadium, and, uh, and that happens all the time because, mm -hmm. you know, people don't show up to their season tickets there's 80 something yep. games to see and so people are always very cool about it though you walk up and they go yeah <laughs> i'm gonna get the fuck out of here yeah good while it lasted <laughs> yeah it's one of my favorite scenes the naked gun they're, they're in the box where the queen would be sitting like oh yeah i guess these are our tickets <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, silly us <laughs> all right now you got anything to promote i yeah. have a show may 19th at uh, sacramento it's at a place called harlow's it's the starlet room at harlow's and it's on my website, foreshaw.net. There's a ticket link there. Um, May 19th in Sacramento. If you live anywhere near there, come on out. It's going to be fun. Also, I just announced a ton of new dates. So go to jimjeffries.com. There's loads of Canadian dates. There's obviously, there's still uh, some Australian dates uh, in the that have tickets for sale. Not many of the shows, but some of the shows do. Uh, Wollongong, I believe, and uh, some of the shows in, in New Zealand. The rest of them are done. Uh, but apart from that, we've we got uh, cool gigs. We've got like Hawaii coming up, Ooh. Maui, and Honolulu. Yeah. How do I get be... on that gig? Yeah. I, I, Start I, doing stand-up now. I, <laughs> I fly the whole family out to the Hawaii gigs. I just say to my agents, just, uh, I just have to break even. That's how much I like Hawaii. I don't even <laughs> want to profit off you people. Just come and see the show and I'll be fucking... Sunbaking. I don't, I, I've never sunbaked in my life. I don't yeah, know I can't why imagine I said that. Like I'll be eating and getting high. You I'll stay in the <laughs> hotel room and go, the beach looks nice. <laughs> oh, no, I got me kids. I got to take them down to the beach and dig, fucking dig holes. That's all I ever used to do as a kid as a beach. You dig a hole. And make a mound. Yeah, you make a mound, and then you got to protect the hole as the tide comes in. Yes. Yeah. That's, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's some good Wait, quality fun. We're if all you, the same yeah, people. <laughs> if you dig it too far out, then the water's never coming. You've just got it's yourself a hole. Yeah, it's not fun. Too soon. Too too close to the shore. You get overtaken. You're so you got to make a trench. So you make yep. a trench. Then you make a wall. Yep. Then you then you have to sit in there and yep. see how. How how fucking dry we can stay, and then you bucket out when the water comes. Yep. Oh yep. yeah, it's good stuff. It's good fun. Just goes to show you, no matter how successful you get, you always want to protect your hole. Yeah, yeah. Oh no. Well, I... that came out. I wasn't planning that. Oh, are you sure that wasn't planned? <laughs> I wasn't planning that. You know what's fun to do on the beach? Right. Listen to our Patreon. Oh, it oh. is. Yes. Yeah. Patreon.com slash IDCAT and confirmed. You know, international shipping works uh, for merch. So I don't know about that.com. 
And follow us on Instagram. International shipping. Yeah. Man, I'm going to make some merch money like those people who have made the April 18th t-shirts. <laughs> There's someone who's made a million dollars off me. Uh, we, could, we, could, we could probably add April 18th shirts to our merch. I don't know. Someone's probably patented by now. I don't think you can patent a date. No, no, yeah, no, I don't know. It seems to happen. Every we'll year. trademark it. We'll figure it out. Okay. Right, yeah, trademark it. Four twenty sixty nine. April eighteenth hats, <laughs> mugs, shirts. Yeah, April tote bags. Tote. All coming. <laughs> Koozies. All right, uh, let's start the podcast. Yeah. Well, we started it. Yeah, let's. Uh, the real bit. That uh, let's introduce our guest. Enjoy. Yeah, let's introduce our let's guest. Let's introduce our guest. Please welcome our guest, Sean Carroll. G'day, Sean. Now it's time to play. Yes, do. Yes, do. Yes, do. Yes, do. Judging a book by its cover. All right, I'm going to go out on a limb here. Are you a doctor, Sean? I am a doctor. Right. Not a real doctor, but a PhD. Oh, yes, you said too much. You said too much. Because what happened was uh, when, when you came on uh, offline, not on the podcast, I'm a bit mental today. My mouth's not working. Mm -hmm. um, but Forrest said, uh, do we need to refer to you as a doctor? So I took yeah. that as a hint. Yeah, yeah. good clue. Uh, uh, yeah, we're going to add yeah. riddles today if you want. You no, I don't want to riddle yet. Well, okay. I, 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 try and guess what Sean's here. So he's not a doctor of medicine. He's, doctor, he's, got, a, he's got a printer. So he, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So right. he'd obviously print things out. When are they going to make one of those that works? <laughs> they, I don't they know. They have them right now. No, no, no. no, no. I've never, not one that works every time. I've never seen a product in Mine mankind works. where we all just acknowledged it doesn't work 20% mm. of the time. <laughs> I've got mine, brother. It's a brother. All right, so here we go. He's, he's got something French on his wall. Yeah, it's not going to help you. Oh, it's not going to help me? No. Oh, okay. I don't okay. see anything in give me this a, room. Give me a riddle. Help. Give me a riddle. Okay. Oh, he has photos. He has loved ones. Uh, okay, so. Yeah, that's good. It's always good to have. <laughs> okay. well, well done, Sean. Narrows it down. <laughs> uh, here's one. Okay, I have two riddles. Here's the first one. Never ahead, ever behind, yet flying swiftly past. For a child, I last forever. For an adult, I'm gone too fast. What am I? Um. Oh, yeah, your um life. Close. Has another word riddle. What flies but has no wings? Uh, uh, Jack's spirit. <laughs> what the? That's, that's, that's like no, a I'm compliment. saying it flies. <laughs> what flies but has no wings? What flies but has no wings? What flies but has no wings? Yeah. Fucking everything has wings that flies, man. That's it can the, go fast. Nah, it can this. go slow. You can have too much time, of it. You can have time, 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 time. I, I love watches. They're the most pointless thing in the world. They're, you, <laughs> you pay, you pay thousands and thousands of dollars for a thing that you, you have to wind up yourself <laughs> and then you check your iPhone to make sure you got it correct. <laughs> and you put your iPhone back in your pocket and you go, aha, I've got, this thing, got on my, I've got this thing on my wrist now that isn't quite accurate because I didn't set it correctly. Well, let me introduce Sean. Sean Carroll is a theoretical physicist at Caltech. He received his PhD from Harvard University and his research covers quantum mechanics, cosmology, and space time. He is the author of several books, including Something Deeply Hidden, Quantum Worlds, and The Emergence of Space Time, and also the host of the Mindscape podcast. You can find him on Twitter and Instagram at Sean M. Carroll. His last name is spelled C A R R O L L. So look him up, follow him on there. And Sean, can you tell us? I mean, this is a, you know, uh, how did you get in, interested in this and end up in this world profession? You know, I'm uh, one of those lucky people who got interested in what I do for a living when I was 10 years old. I was just reading in the local public library books about black holes and particles and general relativity, Einstein. And I said, this is what I want to do for a living. And wait, wait, wait. Uh, I did not have the imagination to change my mind ever since then. Hold up. You did this at 10? You didn't have any Hardy Boys books in yeah, your library? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah my, I'll tell I you. Those I'll, too, but I didn't want to do that. I'll, I'll tell a very quick <laughs> little story, right? So my son, uh, he's not. He doesn't read for pleasure, right? But I try to make my son's nine. So I go, okay, you should read for pleasure, Hank. It's important, man. And you don't either. Yeah, but I don't either. So how <laughs> do I make him read for pleasure when I don't read for pleasure? So what I do is now I have a book on the coffee table with a bookmark in it. And when I hear him coming downstairs, I turn the TV <laughs> off and I act like I'm reading. And, and when he comes down, I go, just a minute, Hank. <sighs> I go, yes, how can I I'm help sure you? I'm sure he's fooled. Dad's reading and reading is cool, Dad. Yeah, Dad just reads in the house for pleasure. What a fucking weird guy. Well, is it working? Um, no, but I've only just started it. I'm only about 10 days into this. 
<laughs> All right. Well, uh, Sean, thank you for being here. Thanks for reading when you were young. Um, thanks for reading when you were young and being able to be here to talk about this today. Uh, uh, what that we're going to do is I'm going to ask Jim a bunch of questions. Clearly uh, none of us read when we were young. That's why we do this I podcast. Read. <laughs> yeah. I, read, I, I, I watch documentaries. It's like reading. Yeah. I was reading on the plane yesterday next to Jim. Uh, you weren't even paying attention. Yeah, I wasn't paying attention. Playing video games. Playing video games. Um, all right. So uh, I'm going to ask question, uh, Jim a bunch of questions um, about time. And uh, then at, at the end of it, you're going to grade him zero through 10. 10 is the best on his accuracy. Uh, Kelly's going to grade him on confidence, zero through 10. I'm going to grade him on et cetera. And here's the categories today, Jim. They're all jokes about time. Uh, so I want you to see if you, if anyone can chime in, Sean, Kelly. Here's the, if you grow zero through 10, oh, here's the joke. What time is it? This is the worst joke. What time is it when an elephant sits on a clock? Time to get a new clock. All right. You got that one. That's wow. pretty good. We here's all knew that. Second worst joke. Very accurate so far. <laughs> 11 through 20. Do you know when ducks wake up? At the uh, quack of dawn. Yeah, I, I knew this. Well, we're all allowed to try. Yeah, I, don't know this. I, I don't know. I, okay. I've never heard uh, these. I'll, I'll give you the next punchline, and I won't nine even nine. ask for the joke. Uh, my dentist appointment is 2.30. That's what? <laughs> That's the classic. That's the classic fucking time joke. Can I also tell the future. Around what time do most people visit the dentist? That was really was the last <laughs> tooth hurty. Tooth hurty. No, you say tooth hurty. Yeah. Tooth hurty. How did you know that was it? Everyone knows that joke. We should just end the podcast now. <laughs> Ten. I don't know any time jokes. I get. I get a point for that. Sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sure. How let's, is wait, time? Let's do uh, some ads quick before we go into the questions. Have we got the time? Yeah. <laughs> Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well with dinners that work for you and not the other way. You yeah, those meals that, that work against you. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's half me diet, those ones that work against you. Cheese. <laughs> mm, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Green Chef's options for every lifestyle ha- include cle- uh, Cleto. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hi. Yeah. Cleto. Yeah. That's like Cleto, but yeah, he yeah, like yeah, Cleto's yeah. ready to eat the chickens with the you hands remember, still you on. You remember Cleto? He, uh, he, he was uh, a witness uh, on the redneck O.J. Simpson trial. Yeah. <laughs> and paleo, vegan, vegetarian, fast and fit, Mediterranean and gluten free. Whether you're looking for carb conscious, gluten free, plant based or calorie conscious options or you just want to have a delicious balanced dishes, Green Chef has flavorful, feel good recipes that are sure to satisfy. As the only keto meal uh, kit on the market, Green Chef makes sticking to a carb conscious lifestyle easy. Uh, Forrest, you had the green chef. What, yeah. what, what did you last eat? Um, it was stuffed peppers. I think it was Ooh. stuffed with like minced pork or something like that. Ooh. And it was really good. And, yeah, it, and good. they, I forget what the sauce is too, but it's, it's the best because it comes all in a bag and you get to do a little bit of cooking. You learn how to cook if you don't know how to cook, but you don't have to know how to cook a lot because it teaches you. It's great. Now, if you need variety, no problem. If you're not not just into stuffed peppers, if you went, oh, I don't want stuffed oh, yeah, peppers. Yeah, there's all sorts there's of stuff. other things. No problem. Green Chef offers 24 always changing recipes to choose from every week, so you never get bored. Yeah, you get to choose. You go and there's about 16 or 20 recipes, and you get to choose 24 uh, per week. Yeah, 24. Yeah, and you get to choose from what you want. So whatever kind of meats and proteins you want, or if you're not doing that, you get to cho- sit there and choose the ones you want. It's awesome. Green Chef's fast and fit option is ideal option for eating well when you're strapped for time. With recipes under 700 calories and ready eat meals in 28 minutes or less. Pretty good. Mm. Green Chef's pre-portioned ingredients means that you'll actually reduce your food waste by at least 25% compared to grocery shopping, according to HelloFresh Global Food Waste Study. So there's an actual study on this. I waste more than that. I I don't portion out (laughs) properly at the stores whatsoever. (laughs) Uh, so you, you get to eat delicious food and help save the planet. What more could you ask for? Go to greenchef.com slash I don't know 130 and use the code I don't know 130. <laughs> I know what you're asking at home. Why 130? It's a dollar 30 off. You get a dollar 30. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 13 Wait. dollars maybe. No, Forrest, you're wrong. You're wrong again. Huh? You get $130 off plus free shipping. What? $130 off. Go to greenchef.com slash I don't know 130 and use the code I don't know 130 to get $130 off plus free shipping. Holy smokes. Green Chef, Green Chef, the number one meal kit for eating well. 
The pandemic changed a lot of things for people work-wise and many have seen it as a possible way to start their own small business. Mm -hmm. That's why so many people are using Shopify, the all-in-one commerce platform to start, run, and grow your business. Shopify gives entrepreneurs the resources once reserved for big businesses. So startups, upstarts, and established businesses alike can sell everywhere, synchronized, online, in-person sales, and effortlessly stay informed. Ooh, pretty good. Scaling your business is a journey of endless possibilities. Possibilities, 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 possibilities. possibilities, possibilities, possibilities. possibilities. Infinity. Why? Why? As someone who doesn't want to deal with anything complicated, Mm -hmm. I can hardly wash myself. (laughs) I love how Shopify has the tools and resources that make it easy for any business to succeed from down the street to around the globe. Shopify makes it simple for you to reach customers online and across global social networks with an ever-growing suite of channel integrations and apps, including Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, and more. Mm. I don't know what the more is. With Shopify, you can synchronize your online in-person sales plus gain insights as you grow with detailed reportings of conversion rates, profit margins, and beyond. It feels like Shopify does everything. Yeah, it's good because I think a lot of people started like online selling businesses during the pandemic because they were looking for something else to do. And that's the biggest problem is figuring out how to manage all of these things. So if you can do it all under one umbrella, that's great. It's, it's more than a store. Shopify grows with you. This is Possibility Powered by Shopify. Go to shopify.com slash IDK, all lowercase, for a free 14-day trial and get full access to Shopify's entire suite of features. Grow your business with Shopify today. Go to shopify.com slash IDK right now. Shopify.com slash IDK. That's Shopify, S-H-O-P-I-F-Y. And we're back. We're back. Here go the questions, Jim. Um, uh, Kelly's going to take some notes here, so we'll remind you of what his answers are, Sean. We go back. Um, how is time defined? How is time defined? What do you mean, the measurements of it? Or, or what would be the... Like if you looked it up in the, the dictionary. The Oxford Dictionary? Okay. Um, time? That's a good question. Yeah. Yes. How, would, how do you Thank phrase you. this? I know, I know what it is, but how do you phrase it? Uh, time is... The distance of existence. <laughs> you just want to rhyme that's, something? I mean, that's a cool phrase. If that's <sighs> yeah, 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 that's yeah, cool. Put that on a T-shirt and like smoke that. it. What? what? Yeah. <laughs> we got some new merch coming. <laughs> that's not, I, look, it makes sense. I, I know that's not going to be the answer, but that makes Maybe sense. Maybe it is. I don't know. I don't know what the, the answer distance is. of existence, man. That sounds cool. What is the arrow of time? Uh, the arrow of time. Uh, that is... Uh, pointing forward. Time's always moving forward. Time never moves backwards. <laughs> what is entropy? Can you put it in a sentence? Yes. What is entropy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, entropy is uh, when we invented the measurements of time. Are time and space related? Uh, time and space are related, yes. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> Why is time different than space? Um, well, space yep. is, uh, is the amount of space you have. <laughs> I already warned him that you were going to try to define <laughs> no, no, things. No, these, okay. <laughs> these words are hard, though. These are like yeah, the building space, blocks of how space, you describe things. Space is the amount of volume in the world, and time is the length that that volume travels. I just want to say that I've, we've done a hundred over a hundred podcasts now. I believe these are the hardest questions. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This is because yeah. you know, you know what it means, but you don't know how to say it's very well, hard. It's I, very I hard. To, some of this it's means. Very, I know what the questions are. It's very hard yeah. to answer these questions without using the word that you, you were trying to answer with. There yeah. you go. What is presentism? Ah, no idea. What is eternalism? Eternalism is uh, that time is eternal. Long after the universe implodes into a thing, time will still be there. Time never ends. Time is eternal. It keeps on ticking, ticking, ticking into the future. Here's one where you might get a point, all right? (laughs) What is the theory of relativity? Who created it and when? Uh, The theory of relativity. Who um, created it and when? uh, There's a point in here that I think you should get. E equals MC squared. Is that relativity? And that was Einstein. He invented that in the 1930s. Okay. 
What does it mean when people say time is an illusion? Um, it may, that's always some old bird who thinks she looks like she's 30, but she's really 50 <laughs> and she's out and, and she goes, oh, time's just a number. And you're like, and look. <laughs> how do we, how do we measure time? <laughs> Through wrinkles, man. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> uh, it, de- it depends, you know. Tree stumps, you cut them in half, you count the rings. Uh, otherwise, we we uh, measure time through. Uh, with watches and stuff like that, seconds, uh, okay. 60 seconds make a minute, uh, 60 minutes make an hour, and so for 24 hours in a day. Okay, I've got five more questions here. Oh, another way to measure time is how long it takes for the planet to go around the, the, the sun. Mm-hmm. These are things that we measure, you know, because months are an amount of time, days are an amount of time, you know, years are an amount of time. So I would say uh, through the solar system is a good way for us to measure time. But all through, also through the sun rising, the fact that people have had sundials since, you know. Well, here you go. For a very long time. Define clock. Uh, clock is, the, uh, is a measuring tool on which to count time. And now name as many things that act as clocks as you can. You're kind of doing that. Watches, phones, mm-hmm. sundials. Um, watch his phone, sundials, big clocks, like <laughs> big, big clocks, little big clocks, grand, grandfather <laughs> clocks. Uh, what measures time? Uh, years measure time, weeks measure time, seconds. Um, I mean, you were talking actual implements or actual Name as many things that acts as clocks as you can, acts as clocks. Uh, yeah, fucking having kids, man, that measures time faster than anything. I tell you what, I never measured time before then. <laughs> Yeah, kids. Can you slow down time? Um, this is a trick question. The answer is no, you can't slow down time. But every now and again, there's something that happens with the solar system going around and we lose a second. Mm. So there are certain years where we lose a second here. About Superman. Superman flies backwards. It makes everything else he does irrelevant. Okay. Uh, he just can <laughs> spin so fast that the planet goes backwards. Yeah, nothing, nothing would happen other than that. <laughs> oh, you, to the you planet can, going backwards. Yeah. You can stop time. <laughs> Daylight savings. That always springs up on you, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's you're true. You're like, oh, I'm going to have a lovely sleep. No, you're not. <laughs> Here, here's a question I can't wait to hear the answer to. Why is the past different than the future? Ooh. Because yeah. uh, the past is known knowledge where the future is not. Wow. Because the past is no yeah, that knowledge. That's the back of the existence, <laughs> yeah. distance of existence. Yeah, that's the other pets that's, a, that's, that's not a bad answer. No, no, it's good. Not. That's why it's going on in a shirt. Last question. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they don't te- teach the past in school. They don't teach the future in school. That's true. They teach the past. Or the past sometimes. They teach history. They don't teach the what future. School, what past? Uh, they, 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 Judah Friedlander has a joke where if he's asking someone in the audience, what do you teach? And he goes, history. He goes, yeah, I teach the future. It's a lot more difficult. <laughs> but, um, last question. Is time travel possible slash real? Um, I don't believe it is, but some people believe it is. The reason I don't believe it is, is because we would have been visited by somebody, a time traveler by now, but maybe time travel can only be invented from now and then we can go backwards and not forwards. And then maybe the forward world isn't existing yet. You get what I'm saying? So it no. could, I, I don't believe it is real, but people are going to say it is. But then there's the black holes. You can go into a black hole and shoot out somewhere else. So there is arguments that you can bend time and time travel is uh, possible, but I don't believe it is. Okay. Sean Carroll, uh, how did Jim do on his knowledge of these questions and time? Zero through 10, 10 the best. You know what? I thought that uh, he started a little slowly, stumbled out of the gate, but came on really strongly there at the end. So I'm going to give him an eight just for the wow. brilliant answer on time travel. Yeah. Yeah. I think the kid clock is what did it. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, know. yeah, yeah. I think it's the time travel answer because this joke that if time travel really existed, we'd be visited from historians from the future is exactly a joke made by Stephen Hawking. So yeah. if you're making the same yeah, jokes as Stephen timing. Hawking, then you know <laughs> <laughs> you know what you're talking about. Actually, you got it better because you you, you also explained the loophole in the joke, which Hawking never did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, Jim, you must be smarter than you think. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Good. How do you do in confidence, Kelly? Uh, four. Flat four. Okay, so that's 12. <laughs> what? That's 12. I'm going to give you a 10 and et cetera for 22. So around what time do most people visit the dentist? Tooth hardly. Tooth hardly. I, I, uh, the- I do enjoy going online and watching some time traveling videos where they think people have time traveled. 
there's always just like a bloke, like in an Ed Hardy t shirt in 1940. <laughs> or, you know what I mean? But there was there's one that spins me out is during a Tyson fight in the in the in the early 90s. There's someone with a camera phone in there with it with an iPhone. It must have been something different, but, yeah. it, but it was a good one. Well, and that's the thing too. What's it's a fake like photo? if if anybody no, ever right. approached you and said, Hey, I'm a time traveler and I came here from 3000, would you believe them or think they're fucking nuts? You would be like, Okay, go away. I listen to everybody. Do you? No. I always like there's 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 that uh, there's an advert for insuring in money or something like that, and there's like a guy walking down the street, and then another guy walks up and goes, "Hey, I'm from the future, and I'm you from the future, and you should invest in these stocks and all that type of stuff." And the guy's like, "Wow!" And he goes, "By the way, your future wife's in that bar right there," and the guy just smiles. I'd like the ad to end like this. So run! Yeah, he walks past the bar. He's like, not going in there. Never go in that bar. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, let's talk to Sean here. Uh, how is time defined? Jim said, time is the distance of existence. Not bad, man. I do like that. And uh, a couple of times, Jim used the idea of thinking of time as a measure of distance, which actually was never done back in the day. Like if you're ancient Greek philosophy, we didn't talk that way, but... Post Einstein, when we think about space time as one kind of thing, uh, we do think as, of time as a kind of a distance in space time. So I wouldn't I mean, that that's one way of thinking about it, but I think it's perfectly valid. There, there's a, there's a, a Australian artist called Peter Allen, and he had a lyric that said, "Time is a traveler," and I, I believe time is a traveler. Do you want to know what why? Right, because when you move away from home and you go off to England or whatever I did for ten years, and then you come back. Fucking hell, everyone's old. Like you didn't really notice it. Like your parents are like old people. All the news readers, like, what the fuck happened to her? I used to wank off to her. She's old as balls now. Right? Yeah, time's a traveler, man. So how would but how would you define time then? Is it you're like you're well, we use the word time to mean different things. One is just a way of locating ourselves in space time, right? If you say like, you know, meet me at seven o'clock, that's a coordinate, it's a label. It says, you know, at this particular reading of the clocks, I should go there and, and you'll be there. But the other thing is that there is sort of a counting of things that happen, right? The number of heartbeats, the number of swings of a pendulum, the number of times the earth goes around the sun, the, the world happens over and over again. And time is the accumulation of all those things. That's why I was giving Jim some points for that. Okay. Now, did we always measure time in minutes, seconds, hours, weeks? This, or, or was there another measurement back in the day where you look back at it like, what were they thinking? That was three whole grogs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> no, I mean, the astronomy was the first way of measuring time, right? Where's the earth in the sky? Where are the stars in the sky? Uh, the division into hours and minutes and seconds came with the Greeks. Before then, I just don't know what they did. Yeah, but they must have always known what a day was because of the sun. They must have always yeah. known a day, and we need a certain amount of sleep with every sun coming up. I need the sleep. Yeah. You know. And the weather. They certainly knew what a year was. You need to know what a year was to do farming. And they, instead of months, they knew where the moon was in the sky, right? The moon takes around a month to go from full moon to full moon again. Right, right. So, what is the arrow of time? Jim said, time is always moving forward, it never moves backwards. A lot of fortune cookie I mean, answers here at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> That's not wrong, but the arrow of time is just the fact that the past and different are the past and future are different from each other. The fact that there's an asymmetry there, and it's kind of a mystery. Uh, again, it was not a mystery back in the ancient world, but once we invented modern physics, the equations of physics from Isaac Newton through Einstein, etc., don't tell any difference between the past and the future. They treat them exactly the same. So there's a, a mystery within modern physics as to why you have photographs of the past, but you don't have any photographs of the future. Why history is easier than futurism. Mm -hmm. And entropy is, uh, Jim said, we, when we invented the measurements of time. Yeah, that's not right. Uh, entropy is a measure of the randomness or disorderliness in a system. So, you know, if you have a deck of cards and it's perfectly in order, two through uh, king, uh, through ace, then it's low entropy, it's orderly. And then when you shuffle it, it, the entropy goes up. So this is a general feature of the universe that entropy always goes up if you count everything. Things go from being orderly in the past to being more disorderly in the future. In that true, the deck of cards is uh, all set on time. 
all on the calendar. So there's yeah. 52 cards, 52 weeks, four all seasons, four decks of cards, 12 things in a in a suit. I never stuff. About that, yeah, actually. it's it's all, all based on the calendar. Hmm. Yeah, the entropy thing's interesting because that's like I like to I like to keep my house really clean, but then it always gets dirty immediately as soon as you're done cleaning it, and like the whole universe is working against you keeping things. It's a law of clean. nature. Yeah, what can yeah. you do? Yeah, that's just right. not be such a slob when he eats. I guess. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm pretty neat. He lives by himself. It's only you making it a messy. I'm very You're neat. like, I clean this place up, and then it gets I turn messy. Around now. <laughs> as, soon, as soon as you vacuum, then some dust's coming down. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I have OCD. I have OCD. Are time and space related? Jim said yes, and I said, why is time different than space? Well, space is the amount of volume in the world, and time is the length that the volume travels. So let's talk about space and time. I guess. Well, they're definitely related. They're both ways of finding yourself in the universe. If you, again, if you're going to meet somebody, you say not only 7 p.m., but you got to tell them where, right? You got to give them that information. Back in the days of Isaac Newton, you just thought of them as two separate ways of finding yourself in the universe. Once we have relativity and Einstein, we realize that time and space are both part of space time. And again, it becomes sort of a question as to why we all agree on which is time and which is space. Because if we were moving near the speed of light, that would not be so obvious. We would mix things up compared to each other. Mm. I got to tell you, you're doing a good job of explaining this to, to at least to someone that doesn't understand this. This is already easier than Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> it just is. <laughs> yeah. um, what is presentism? Jim said, no idea. No idea. Well, that, he might have gotten it right? if you had asked the <laughs> eternalism question first. You know, yeah. Eternalism is the idea that all of the different moments in the history of the universe are equally real, right? It's not just that right now is real. So the past, present, and future are all real. We're just at any one moment. We only experience one moment. But that doesn't mean that there's no reality to the past or future. Whereas presentism is the opposite of that. It says that just the present moment is real. The past is just a memory of that, and the future is just a hypothetical prediction. I would have gotten that, but Forrest fucked me on that one, didn't he? Yeah, because he did. He asked it the wrong way around. Do you believe in different lines of timelines, like in movies, multiverse, multiverses? I do actually, but that's a, uh, optional. We don't know for sure, but that's a quantum mechanics question. Within quantum mechanics, there's very good reasons to believe that whenever you measure a tiny microscopic quantum system, you branch the universe into different timelines with different measurement outcomes. And there again, they're all equally real. Yeah, that's the Loki. Did you watch the Loki uh, show on Marvel? <laughs> I did, but yeah, yeah. One. I don't think that the Marvel uh, Disney Channel shows are the best introduction to the multiverse. Mm. But you know, you could you could do that, or you could buy my book. Either way. <laughs> <laughs> What movie would you say is the most accurate time traveling movie where you go, if it does exist, that's the way it would be done? Probably 12 Monkeys. Oh, 12 wow. Monkeys. I, I love that. that movie. I haven't seen that movie in years. The point is that if you could travel into the past, you still couldn't change it. This is the problem with all time travel movies. Uh, you generally go into the past and you like fix something, right? Uh, but you probably can't do that. And if you look at the logic of 12 Monkeys, everything that is shown in the past is also reflected in the future very accurately. It is almost the case in Avengers Endgame also, I, I have to admit. And I, well, I'm not just admitting it, I'm bragging about it because I helped influence them. I was a science consultant on that movie. And I told really? them, if you're going to travel to the past, don't mess with it. And, and Ant-Man says that that's exactly right, that Back to the Future is just bullshit. You can't do that. And that, that takes away any of the appeal of time travel, really, because isn't the point to go and fix things in the past? But if you just have to go watch it, it's gotta check where it would out, you go? Man. It's got to check it out. Well, you can't go back and kill I Hitler? Don't, yeah. No. I, don't, I, I don't think that that's the only point. It's like saying, why have detective TV shows? Because they can't undo the crime. It's still interesting to well, figure out what happened with the crime. they can barely even solve the crime half the time. Yeah, I, <laughs> I believe in, in time travel, if it exists, would be more like the Back to the Future where you can only stay on the same plane that you're on. Like you, the, the, I don't like time travel where you go, oh, I'm going to go back to ancient Greece in 1840, What you know what I mean? Like you can't, you can't, yeah. you can't travel through time as well and space. You can only travel through time. Like the time trap, the time machine, the original one where the guy just sat there and the, the candles go down. Oh, shit, I love that film when I was a kid. <laughs> Which film? The time machine, the um, original one, and he had a big disc behind him, and he sat in a chair, and it went, and then everything Wells. just started moving. H.G. Wells, yeah, started moving around him. 
Bit of fun. Um, <laughs> wait, is it really complicated reason why you can't go back to the past and change things? I'm kind of confused on that. Why you can't? It's not a complicated reason. It's an easy reason. It already happened. <laughs> but if you're you, back, that's why you can't but if change you're, it. If you're back, this there, is why can't you do the butterfly effect and then you do something and yeah, then the, the whole one, world the changes? The big one is kill Hitler. Everyone's always like, you go back in time, you kill Hitler. Yeah, and of then course. You, you, the Holocaust. As in happen. Bitcoin. Yeah. Well, I just want to go back and tell my young self not to be a knob. Okay. <laughs> Can I do that? Or is he always going to be a knob in every fucking timeline? No, that answers that question. Uh, yeah. well, so why, you, you can't go back and kill Hitler and then back in time? You could do that. Well, look, if you did go back and change the past, you might go back and change it so dramatically that you never came into existence yeah. in the future. And then who was it who went back to fix things? And the answer is, you can't go back and change the past. Got it. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right, and that makes sense now yeah, because you then you get... wouldn't be born, and then you wouldn't. Yeah, and you, what if you're just like stuck there? Yeah, yeah. Oh wait, wait. So you can't go. You you shouldn't go back and change the past. You but sh- if you did change you things, can't. you can't. You can't. It you already can't. happened. Can't do it, Jack. Answer me this question, Sean. So why <laughs> didn't Biff notice that his stepson <laughs> looked like Marty McFly? <laughs> <laughs> Like that seems like that's a red flag right there. It's um, a Hollywood question, not a physics question. I'll I can't you, I can't help you with that. I don't want to get bogged down too much in movies, but you know what movie I like time travel on and because I'm into like chick flicks too is the time traveler's wife. I like that one a lot. Yeah. But she was always nagging, how long are you gonna be uh, what time of. are you gonna be back? <laughs> I'm gonna be back in nineteen eighty four. Shut up. Um, <laughs> Which side of presentism or eternalism are you on? Do you have a Preference. I'm an eternalist myself. I think that the past, present, and future are all equally real. I think there's a lot of things that are real out there that we don't get to go visit. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. If you could travel in the future to anywhere at any time, where would you go and why? Well, you can travel to the future. You know, the joke is I did it yesterday and here I am today, right? Yeah. The question is, can you travel to the future faster? Yeah. And the answer is again, yes. Einstein taught us how to do this. You zip out near the speed of light and you come back. What you can't do is return. You cannot return back to the present day once you go to the Why future. You go at the speed of light backwards. Like when you're fast forwarding too much and you know, or go back a bit. Oh, I've gone back too far. Oh, they're out of sync. There is no reverse rewind button on the universe. It only goes well, Why is there only a fast forward then? Well, because no, because it's Design like flaw. it's like when you travel to Australia, you lose that time on the airplane, even though you're existing oh, on I'm the a airplane. I'm a time traveler. I've been even to Australia though, a lot. Even though you're existing on that airplane, you're just on the airplane, and then you go forward that day. But when you come back, you usually come back an hour earlier. No, you come back a little. Later. You come back a day. Yeah, early. yeah, something like that. You lose a day, you gain a day. I never. I never <laughs> and did I get the theory of relativity right? But isn't that that's sp- the next question? That's splitting the atom, Who is right? The theory of relativity. Who created? It? He said E equals mc squared. Einstein, 1930s. So it was not the 1930s. It was Einstein. It's that there were other people involved. And E equals MC squared is absolutely part of it. It's not the only part. It's the basic idea that space and time are glued together into space time. That's what we call special relativity. And then there's general relativity. Special relativity was 1905. General relativity is 1915 and says that space time is curved. And it's that curvature that we feel as gravity. When you see the earth going around the sun or apples falling from trees, it's because gravity is curving space time itself and things are doing their best to move on straight lines, but they can't because they're in a curved four dimensional space time. The apple falling out of the tree and hitting him on the head. Everyone talks about that. Like it was a magical moment, but didn't he see other things fall before it smashed him in the head? This is an excellent question. So the point is not that people had never seen apples fall from trees or didn't know what to do about it. What Newton's Isaac Newton's insight was that, the explanation for apples falling from trees is the same as the explanations for planets moving around the sun. It's the same force of gravity that is responsible for both. Here's a, as a theoretical physicist, have you ever written any sort of equation on a window? Because whenever I see it in yeah, movies, why are you guys always writing on windows? <laughs> <laughs> getting the hard hitting right, questions. I, tr- I tried to figure it out by getting a, a, a pin board and putting a whole lot of red tape, yeah, red string, theorist. red string, and yeah. crime. Yeah, that, that's a conspiracy theory. Yeah, to find out why he did it. It's a theoretical <laughs> physicist. It's a mystery. Yeah. He's a detective. 
This is more a Hollywood question than a physics question. But yes, I have done it, actually. Uh, certain places, just for aesthetic reasons, do have windows and clear things you can draw on. But most of the time, it's blackboards and whiteboards. Yeah. And dry erase markers probably work I, well. I'm going to ring up Russell Crowe and ask why he did it. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I once said a joke about Russell Crowe, and then he asked me, he goes, he goes, I heard you do a joke about me. What's the joke? And the joke was... This is before I ever met him. It was I went and saw the movie Noah. I'm not religious, so what I did was I just thought it was uh, Beautiful Mind 2 and the guy really <laughs> went <on> crazy. <laughs> oh, no. Inside his head. Yeah. Um, what does it mean when people say time is an illusion? Jim said that's just when some old bird who is 50 but thinks she looks 30. Yeah, that's pretty accurate, man. <laughs> That is not very accurate, but uh, you I don't, don't you agree. Don't live in LA, I assume. <laughs> time is, I do, I do. <laughs> uh, I, I don't think that time is an illusion. I know why people say it because, you know, because they become eternalists because you think about physics, you start thinking that all moments are equally real. And then you think, start, you go a little bit too far. You go one step off the edge and you say, well, if all moments are equally real, then time itself is not even real. The passage of time isn't real. There's just all the moments existing, but that's, that's just wrong because, you know, we have space, all moments, all points in space exist, but we don't say that space is therefore an illusion. Time is maybe not what you thought it was 2000 years ago, but it's absolutely real. What about the theory that we never die because atheists have this theory. You never die because you'll never experience death because you won't know it happened because you'll be dead. So your brain basically will think that it's always living forever. Hmm. I've never heard that. No, you won't know you're dead. Yeah. So yeah, you, yeah, you're, 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 yeah, you know what I mean? Like you're not going to live forever. I'm right. not saying you live forever, but your brain won't. Your brain it. never concedes. It'll never concede that it's dead. <laughs> I think that that theory assumes that dying is instantaneous rather than kind of gradual where you kind of know. Oh, no, no, well no. Your, bra your, your brain will be like, I, I think I'm dying. <laughs> yeah. And then you'll always think that for the rest of eternity. Yeah. So you're forever dying. Yeah. Well, that's interesting, Sean, because it's, I feel like now when you said that, you know, like when you're watching TV and you fall asleep, but you're still sort of watching TV. And then you can hear it in the background. That's probably what dying is like. We're like, oh no, here I go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you won't, the thing is, you won't know the exact moment. True, yeah. but you also will be, unless it's instantaneous. Like if you're dying a slow death, then you'll be like, oh, this is it. And then, yeah, yeah. yeah and then you're like, then you're constantly like, this is it. I I, look, I'm an atheist. I, I'm, I don't believe in heaven or hell or anything like that. But it's, dying still scares me. Still, really? Yeah, well, I'm still scared to why die. Why wouldn't it? Yeah. Because it's like, atheist has nothing to do with it scaring you. And I mean, yeah. there's also, there is a heaven hell thing if you're religious, but you know, still you want to live. I don't think anything will happen afterwards, but it's like, yeah, it's pretty final, the old dying in it. Yeah. <laughs> but you won't, you won't know it happens. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm going to live forever. <laughs> I do think it is interesting how time is so often a perception, right? Like it can move really slowly in certain points in your life and move really quickly. That's what is really kind of freaky about time. It's like, I imagine being in prison, time moves very slowly because you're bored. And then when things are exciting, you know, time moves really quickly. Well, there's a saying with children that the, uh, the days along the years are short. Yeah. And that's the truest thing about pairing. And I can tell you. That was yeah. part of the riddle. Yeah. yeah. Each day you go, fuck, you know, oh, you get into bed. That took forever. And then you're like, fuck, he's 10. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it, it goes really quick, their, their childhood. Um, how do we measure time? Jim said through wrinkles, tree stumps, watches and stuff, seconds, minutes, hours. How Sun long does it take for the planet to go around? Sun yeah, through clocks. I mean, that one's basically correct, right? There are things in the world. If you want to measure it rather than just know that it's passing, you know, the wrinkles aren't very good because it's you cannot go exactly from the existence of the wrinkles to a moment of time or an interval of time. What you want is something that does the same thing over and over again in a repet repetitive, reliable way. That's why the earth going around the sun is very good. A grandfather clock with a pendulum rocking back and forth is very good. Atoms vibrating at certain frequencies are very good. These are reliable, oscillating things, and those are what let us measure the passage of time. He, I, he's, I thought tree stump was a good answer for you too, Jim. Because <laughs> when you go, that's a good one. When you go to uh, like any of the redwood or sequoia forests, they always have that one cut in half, and they have all the arrows. Like here's the birth of Christ. Here's the, it has all this, you know, the really oh, old trees. Cool. Yeah, I I have been mugged twice in my life. I, I won't mention the first time, but the, the second time I got mugged was a very placid mugging where I had a 
Yeah, Happy maybe I had a watch that was maybe four hundred dollar watch. Nice watch, you know what I mean. But I got mugged for my watch. Now here's the place I got mugged. I got mugged in Greenwich for a watch. Doesn't that, <laughs> doesn't that blow your mind? Because that's where time's measured from. Holy! Oh, crap. I wasn't thinking Greenwich Mean Time. Yeah, Greenwich Mean. I got uh, yeah, I got mugged in Greenwich for a watch. I, I was thinking New York City, Greenwich Village. Anyways, that's no, cool. no yeah. Greenwich Mean Time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well. Yeah. <laughs> but it's very important there. Bit of irony. Is that irony? Yeah. Maybe it was like a time traveler. <laughs> Coincidence? Yeah, just a coincidence. Yeah. Oh, like, but I thought it was quite interesting at the time. I remember walking away from the market going, ah. <laughs> We all learned something here today. Um, so that is the definition of a clock then, just a measuring tool on which to measure time. Jim, this is where Jim was crushing it in points. Or? Well, in particular, it's something that does the same thing over and over again in, yeah. in the right number of steps compared to other clocks. It's kind of a circular definition, but that's all we got. There's a guy in my neighborhood, literally, he, I, you can measure time by him. Every morning. <laughs> his name's at, Manuel Rolex. <laughs> <laughs> at 7 a.m., he starts his walk. He does this whole walk around the thing. If you're there at the right times, you'll see him. He goes to the corner store, right, because it opens at a certain time. He's like. But animals know time. Yeah. They know when you're going to be back. My dad has two birds that visit him at the same time every single day. Yeah. They got their internal clocks. Yeah, I don't know. That's a that's a term. Yeah, your your internal clock, your circadian rhythms, and all of that stuff. I assume would be a measurement of, or some form of clock, right? Yeah, no, your body is full of clocks. Uh, like I said, your breath, your heartbeat, but then also there are pulses in your brain, in your nervous system. There are changes in your chemicals through the day that you know when you're awake, when you're tired, etc. And so they're not as reliable as atomic clocks right. or Rolexes, but uh, you absolutely feel the passage of time. And there's also psychological passage of time, which can de depend on lots of things. A big thing for the psychology of time is, are you experiencing something new? When you're experiencing something new, time seems to move uh, quickly because there's so many new things coming, coming at you. When, when nothing is happening and you're bored, you're like, ah, this is taking forever. Right, right, right. Yeah. The DMV. Yeah, well, it's, yeah, it's their, their clocks don't work. It's when anytime you go shopping and you see somebody who's just sitting in like a purse store that nobody's visiting, some of my friends would be like, <laughs> oh, that's a, that's an easy job. And I'm like, that would be fucking awful. <laughs> like I would want to if I'm going to work retail, I want to work in a really busy store where the day goes by quickly because you have a lot of things to do. Like we'll sitting you around. Day, you get your job at the dollar shop. OK. All right. <laughs> I love the dollar check store. Out, check out Chick at Whole Foods, man. That, that's, a, that's a tough job. <laughs> That's why, they, and they don't have clocks in casinos, so they, oh, they don't want yeah. you. They don't want you to know what time and it is. And malls, yeah, malls don't have clocks. Nope, no nah, malls really? have clocks. I've, I've seen clocks. I don't know. My mom malls. told me that this could be a I'll some say. malls. Jack's mom, what are you doing? <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, can you slow down time? Jim said no, you can't. But every now and again, there's something happening in the solar system where we lose a second. Well, it's completely true about the uh, leap second, as we say, because. The Earth going around the sun and the Earth rotating is not as reliable as you would like. It's not as reliable as modern physics ways of measuring clocks are. So there are leap seconds that sort of adjust the number of seconds in a year. But I actually, I like the answer that you can't slow down in time because many physicists would say that you can, but I think they're just being sloppy. Mm. If you go out near the speed of light and then you come back, you know, you age a different amount than if you stay back here on earth. And some people will say, well, that's kind of like changing the rate at which time flows. But the person who goes out when they're looking at their watch or whatever, they see still see it ticking at one second per second. There's nothing different about that. So I like the short and simple answer. No, you cannot change the rate at which time flows. Okay. So we can't travel at the speed of light. We, we can break the sound barrier. We can't break the light barrier yet, right? Do you, foresee, right. Do you foresee a time where we can and we will have time nope. travelers? No, nope. No, that's the laws of physics in the way. Like the speed, the speed of sound is just a convenient thing to measure, but the speed of light is really something you can't go faster than. Right. But it, it is a speed, right? Because we it see is. we see the sun takes like 10 minutes, the rays to hit us, right? Yeah, and, and so it's a speed, and you can never go faster than that speed. How, how far <laughs> can you can you give us the actual speed? How many miles an hour is is light? I don't know miles per hour. It's three hundred thousand kilometers per second. Per second. That's pretty fast. Right. Three hundred thousand kilometers. Kilometers. Yeah. Isn't that your like hundred meter time? <laughs> yeah, three three <laughs> three thousand kilometers. Three hundred thousand. Three hundred thousand. So oh, well, it's only like a hundred and fifty, hundred and sixty per thousand second. miles only. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you right now what it is. It's three. Well, Elon Musk just bought Twitter, so anything's possible, guys. That's, that's true. <laughs> it's 
It's 186,411 miles per second. Yeah, well, that's pretty fast. Be a good way to travel. All right, well, let's get working on that. <laughs> yeah, I know. You'd be like, oh, I got to go to Cleveland this weekend. Who cares? <laughs> Getting in there in 0. 0.00001 seconds. Like, <laughs> like, yeah. That is the type of time travel that I wish there was. Like, I don't want to go to any other timeline or anything like that, but I do wish there was a way that you could just snap your fingers and be in a different place. Teleporting would rule. Yes, teleportation right. is what I'm very interested oh, no, in. No, I'll, I'll never quit stand-up comedy if teleportation becomes... Yeah, you just show up on stage. If I have a thing in my room, I'll just walk out in a dressing <laughs> yeah. gown and if I can tell jokes and go back to my living room. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, do that you think is that's unfortunately space travel, not time travel. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'd like space travel. I would like space travel too. They got to put comedy clubs on yeah. other planets. Get on that. <laughs> all these people that go, we need to colonize Mars and all that. Let's just let the planet die. We, we can all just die. We don't need to go to Mars. They're a red fucking rock where nothing grows and they live a shitty existence. We already have the Red Rocks Casino. Yeah, <laughs> just die. Just go, ah, oh, well. Mm, I'll beat. But I'm usually, I'm usually Thanks, the Earth. We had a good time. <laughs> I, I'm usually the nihilist on this show. I'm trying to take my bits. So. What, you want to live on Mars? You no, think no, you're no. the nihilist on this show? <laughs> I, I I'm always it. talking about how I want to die. Uh, Luis doesn't even talk. Yeah. Uh, yeah Luis, Luis is upset. <laughs> um, <laughs> time's traveling slow for him today. Uh, <laughs> why, why is the past different than the future? Jim said, because the past is known knowledge where the future is not. They don't teach the future in school. Good answer, right? You know, that's, those are all true statements. They're not quite the reason why. They're, they're ways in which the past is different from the future. The reason why is because entropy is increasing. I mean, that's the interesting thing. This is a research level question in modern physics. It's easy to say that things go from order to disorder. You know, you can scramble an egg, but you cannot unscramble the egg. Then that's a manifestation of entropy increasing. And we think that that increase of entropy is the entire reason why there is a difference between past and future, why you have memories of the past, why it causes precede effects, why we're all born young and grow older. But we don't know why when the universe started, it was so orderly and low entropy in the first place. That's a, that's a mystery to us right now. So yeah. that was the big bang. There was just like zero entropy. And then now it just completely is disheveled at this point. It was very, very low entropy. Yeah. And we don't know why. Yeah, we had that. We did an episode of memory. Did and, we? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I get it. And uh, I also don't remember. The gist, <laughs> I don't remember. No, the, the, we loved that. We the, loved that episode. The gist, the, one of the big things I took from that was about she, she was saying that um, that even people that we think have good memories or they think themselves have good memories, like that all memories are everyone's memory is probably worse than you think, if not really bad. Yeah. I, I, I was in Calgary the other day and the lady who picked us up uh, with my friend, Tommy Campbell, who was opening for me, um, talked about when the three of us went go-karting together. Yeah. I don't remember even meeting her. I don't yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I feel yeah, really go-karting bad. Go-karting something you should remember. Like go-karting, I franged around a track with a helmet on my head <laughs> and I have no recollection. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, that that was that memory episode was, and then I'm coupling it with this time one right now, and I'm just like, yeah, all right, I guess nothing matters. The the present is a gift. Uh, time traveling. That's so why it's called now. We kind of already <laughs> talked about this at length at the beginning. Is time travel possible? Real? Jim said he doesn't believe. Thanks, Jack. Yeah, um, but we kind of covered this. I feel like already we did. We spent a lot of time on that. Let's so. talk about. Well, his, I mean, the, the, oh, sorry. The, the he talked about the we, black hole, and you kind of nodded when he when he was talking about going into a black hole and shooting out somewhere else. Maybe we can talk about that. Well, the the short answer is we're not sure whether or not time travel is possible. We You're think it's sure. probably not. I am. The <laughs> simple answer is that it's probably not. But there have been proposals for how to do it. You know, if you. If you put aside your love for Back to the Future and, and think about Interstellar, for example, oh, yeah. uh, where there's a wormhole that takes you across space and, and changes your perception of time, that's all, it's not exactly uh, completely realistic, but it's based on ideas that are real physics. So we know how time travel might work if it is possible, but there's a lot of reasons to think that it's just not possible in the real world anyway. Is time different on other planets because the moon moves differently, it goes around the sun differently or whatever their sun is? So would a second be longer or something or is a time a constant throughout the universe? 
Time is as far as we can tell constant in the sense that if you built an atomic clock, it would work the same no matter where you put it. Of course, if you build a pendulum clock on a planet where the gravity is different, then it would work differently. But, you know, that's just your bad design sense rather than the flow of time being actually yeah, different. Sundials would be different, things like that. But They would be, yeah. Well, Calendars you- would be different, but, but the number of oscillations of a cesium atom would be the same. Right. I like how he said, right, yeah. What did he, what did he just say? Yeah. He right. just said that yeah. it'd be the same. A clock works the same no matter where you fucking put it, unless there's a pendulum involved that involves gravity. And if I put this watch anywhere, it would still work the same. Actually, it wouldn't. This is a, no, I think it's this is a motion thing. Yeah. I'm so lazy that I laid down one day and my watch stopped ticking. Because <laughs> <laughs> oh, it has the yeah. yeah. I masturbate with my right hand. I wear my watch on the left. I know what happened. What it, what's your main focus when you study time? Like what's, what's the main thing you are trying to figure out um, as an individual or the thing you're well, most the main interested thing in? Is, yeah. It's probably this, this arrow of time business. Why all of these ways in which the past is different from the future, how they all trace back to entropy increasing. Like when you, when you think about cause and effect, if you swing your arm and you knock a wine glass onto the floor, right? It's very natural to say the reason why the wine glass fell is because I swung my arm and I hit it. It is very unnatural to say I swung my arm because the wine glass was going to fall. (laughs) We don't put causes in the future and effects in the past. And so why is that, right? I mean, this is a a question at the boundary of philosophy and physics, but it's a, it's a fascinating one that we don't completely understand the answer to yet. Would that hold up in court though? Could you say, (laughs) I I stabbed that knife because she was going to die anyway. (laughs) (laughs) She she had a stab wound, stab wound in her. So I I had to fill it in with a knife. (laughs) I like the wine glass one. So next time I knock something over, I'm like, yeah, I swung my arm because the wine glass was going to fall. <laughs> Didn't knock it over. Tried to, tried to catch yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a fun party <laughs> trick. Time that. it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your carpet was already dirty. It's already <laughs> had the stuff on there. Um, okay. Uh, here's a part of our show, dinner party facts. We ask our expert to give us a fact, something obscure, interesting, that our audience can use to impress people about this subject. We have... Uh, I have I have two. I have an easy one and a hard one. <laughs> All right. Let's do both. Like the it. easy one... The easy one is the word time is the most used noun in the English language. Wow. Yeah. 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 According to the people who make the dictionaries. There you go. What, the herb or the actual measurement of time? No, I know. It took you this long. (laughs) It is used all the time. It is used all the time. It's the most used noun, right? Obviously, like the is used more often, but it's the most used noun in the English language. Yeah. Oh, wow. And I think in almost all other languages, there's a similar. Word There's a lot of songs about time too. Now that I think about yeah. it, yeah. So I guess yeah. that's yeah. I just thought of yeah. a couple, but I, I just know. thought of like four. The Pink yeah. Floyd song's called "Time." Yep. If I yeah. could put time in a bottle, that was well, <laughs> Prince. Prince had a sign of the times. Yeah, there's lots of songs with time in it, bro. Ah, more stay yeah. in the time. <laughs> time. Okay. Come on. The most used now. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm confirming. I'm confirming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you say this, this all is the time. <laughs> And then the second one. Oh, you want the hard one? Yeah. yeah. There's a, there's a, oh, that there's was a tricky the easy one. one? We were, yeah. That was the easy one. There's the, we just mentioned the fact that the most precise way to measure time, the best clock that we have are atomic clocks, where you really look at the vibrations of a certain atom. It happens to be a cesium atom. Okay. So this has been true for over 50 years. We've used this particular physical phenomenon, vibrations of a cesium atom to measure time, but we're, changing that right now like right as we speak they are the physicists of the world are in the process of switching over from using atomic clocks to using what are called optical clocks so we're changing the definition of a second to be a little bit more precise right now Whoa. also time zones they mustn't be that accurate right <laughs> time zones depending oh, yeah. depending on where you're situated in the time yeah, zone there's always like a jagged yeah, line like it's squiggly. Like, there's a mountain range yeah, or something yeah, like, like time like, zones are all gerrymandered who, who figured out them and- well it used to be that you would just use the local time depending on where the sun was but what that meant was that you know Los Angeles and Las Vegas would have different local times or, you know, Los Angeles and San Diego because they were a little bit different in longitude. So that turned out to be more inconvenient than just grouping them together in chunks of one hour each and calling it a time zone. 
Yeah. But like, who is that? The government that figures out those lines, or is that scientists that got yeah. together for that? No, scientists would do a much more sensible job than what we actually have. <laughs> yeah, because it's, it's definitely the government. But you know, you know, like Adelaide and yeah, South Australia. This is dumb. What you're about yeah, to say yeah. is dumb. They have a half hour difference. Yeah. yeah. Or, yeah, it's terrible. Because when you're traveling in Australia, you're yeah. like, now it's a uh, half hour or an hour and a half. That it's makes like, me sick. Yeah. It's quite, it's quite confusing. <laughs> it's terrible. Well, and there are some places like Indiana that don't do daylight savings time. So sometimes they're in Eastern time. Sometimes they're in Central time. It Arizona, is a terrible system. Over. Arizona does yeah. it too. And then they haven't gotten together with like the satellite radio or your phone yet. So so if you're traveling through there, <laughs> you're like, does my phone update to this? And then you're, yeah, it's yeah. the worst. Oh, there's, yeah. there's towns in Australia where the timeline goes through the middle. Yeah. So if you're like you're a plumber, you have two one o'clock appointments and two, you know what I mean? Like no. it's very fucking yeah. difficult. Oh my God. That's why they say time is an illusion. <laughs> yeah. At that point. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess we've learned everything there is to know about time. Um, no, I, this, I, I thought you explained everything. It was like, great the way you explained it. Cause sometimes we have complicated subjects and oh, except for Jack, Jack's brain melted at some point. I don't remember. It's a, it's in the headphones now. It's all oozed out. Ah, okay. Well, <laughs> yeah. Uh, 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 pardon the pun, but, Thank you for your time, Sean. Um, <laughs> oh, uh, uh, the, uh, Sean, you can find him on Twitter and Instagram at Sean M. Carroll. And uh, his podcast is called The Mindscape Podcast. And uh, he's got many books. I believe this was your last book, Something Deeply Hidden, Quantum Worlds and the Emergence of Space Time. You can find on Amazon and other places that you want to buy books. And what's your podcast about Mindscape? I mean, I'm assuming... Yeah. Every week I just interview someone smart about some big ideas. You know, I, it'll be about physics, but also biology, uh, neuroscience, philosophy, sometimes politics. I just interviewed Daniels, who are the directors of Everything Everywhere oh, nice. All at Once, the new movie oh, about the multiverse that just came out. Don't stop hinting. I'm happy to do your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Is this the dumbest podcast you've been on? <laughs> Uh, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> I don't right. want to insult anybody else's podcast. All right, Sean. Thank you for being on the podcast. Uh, look, ladies and gentlemen, if you're ever at a party and someone comes up to you and goes, oh, I hurried here. I traveled here at the uh, speed of light. Go, oh, I don't know about that. And walk away. <laughs> Good night, Australia. <laughs>